السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We'd like to have everybody come back in, inshallah, from wherever you happen to be, from the outside and from the souk. Please return to your places, inshallah. We're going to continue our program. As-Sa'adatu, here fi Salafiyya. And our next speaker is our brother, Abu Ois, who's going to speak to us on another aspect of the minhaj and its ability to bring to us a sa'ada, a haqiqa, insha'Allah, true happiness, insha'Allah. Walitafaddal. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah. Wa ba'd. All praise be to Allah has gathered us here and has brought us here for this great blessing of being able to gather together with brothers and sisters up on the book of Allah Ta'ala and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the methodology of the minhaj al-salaf al-salih. The matter I want to speak about to get straight to the point is a very important issue, especially in times of fitna, in times of confusion, in times of darkness, in times of storms where people are being thrown left and right and confusion has taken place. And that is the importance of irtibat or sticking to the ulama, the importance of sticking to the scholars. And there's no doubt that this is the way of the, those upon the doubt of Salafiyyah. And there's no doubt that this is the minhaj of Salaf al Salih. And there's no doubt that one cannot stay upon this minhaj and be well grounded in this minhaj unless one does in fact know who the scholars are and have a connection to the scholars. So in this way, if we are looking for sa'ada or happiness in Salafiyyah, we first must preserve our Salafiyyah and make sure that we maintain our Salafiyyah and that we're upon our Salafiyyah. And this is done by sticking closely, sticking closely to the scholars. And if this is done and this is understood, then of course the need to stick to the scholars in times of ease is one thing and the need to stick to them in times of hardship is even more and more and more important. Allah Taala said, "Are they equal those who know and those who do not know?" And they are not equal. And Allah said, "These are parables." Tilka amthal, nadribu halil nas, that we show to the people, but no one understands them illa alimun, except those who have knowledge. And Allah says, He raises the people up in degrees, those who believe. And those who have been given knowledge, he raises them up darajat, upon levels. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated that whoever Allah wants good for, يفقحوا He grants them fiqh. He grants them understanding of deen. And the opposite of that matter is true. That he who Allah does not want good for, then he does not grant him understanding of deen. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated that he who takes a path in which he is seeking knowledge, Allah will make the path for Jannah easy for him. And the angels lay down their wings out of respect or mercy for him. And out of being pleased with what the student of knowledge is doing. And everything in existence in the heavens and the earth make dua for him and seek the forgiveness of Allah for him. Even to the degree of the fish in the ocean. And the virtue of a scholar over a worshiper is like the virtue of the moon at the time of Badr over the rest of the planets. And very the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. They do not inherit dinar and wala dirhama, not gold pieces or silver pieces, but what they inherit is knowledge. So this is something that must be understood. And Imam Ahl Sunnah, Imam Ahmad bin Hamba rahimahullah said, as you all probably have read in his, in his introduction to Ar-Rad al-Jahmiyyah, the response against the Jahmiyyah, he said, 
that there is a biqaya, a, sm- a small amount or existing amount of Ahlul Ilm, calling those who have dalla, who have went astray ila al-huda, to the guidance. And they are patient with the harm that comes to them upon guiding the people. They revive and bring back to life with, a, with the book of Allah, the dead. Yuhyuna bi kitab Allah al They bring back to life with the book of Allah, the dead. وَيُبَسِّرُونَ بِنُورِ اللَّهِ أَهْلِ الْأَمَةِ And they make, they give sight back to the blind with the light of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. فَكَمْ مِنْ قَتِيرٍ لِإِبْلِيسِ كَدْ أَحْيَاهُ How many people have been killed, taken out by, by Iblis and Ahlul Ilm, Ahlul Sunnah, Ahlul Athar, Ashab Hadith, they have brought them back to life and resurrected them. وَقَمْ مِنْ ضَالٍ طَاعَةٍ And how many people have been astray? They have guided. How great is their effect upon the people and how evil the people's effect is upon them. They remove from the book of Allah the distortion of the extremists, the false claims of the false claimers, and the misinterpretations of the ignorant. Ahl al-Hadith, Ahl al-Alm, it is enough for them that they have protected the deen of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. They have been guards regarding the deen of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. They protect it from being polluted. They can, they protect it from being infiltrated and dirtied and made filthy. They make sure that the, that that which has come is sound and clear as it was sent down from the heavens upon the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Ahmad rahimullah says, Al-Nasu, the people, muhtajuna ila al-ilm, are in need of knowledge. Hajatun masa, a severe need. More than they need for ta'am, for food, more than they need, huh? Ishada? La la, laysa li. Hadha sahibna. More than they need for fear, more than for food, more than they need for drink, because food and drink you only need once in a day or twice. But the knowledge you will need as long as you are breathing. The knowledge you are in need of it as long as you are breathing. And Imam Hassan al-Basri said, Inna hadhi fitna. Very these, de- these matters of fitna, these days of fitna, trial and tribulations, when they are approaching, before the fitna actually takes place, it is known by the scholar. But once it happens, once everyone has become confused, once that which was clear becomes unclear, once heads start to fly and blood is shed, then everybody knows it. Everybody knows it, even the jahil. They say, oh, that was a fitna. But the alam, the scholar knew it, and he seen the beginnings of it, and he warned against it before it happened. Verily all the, there are many verses of Qur'an and Sunnah, many texts that talk about the importance of knowledge, and the importance of those who carry the knowledge. And insha'Allah ta'ala, this is something that we need to understand and reflect upon. And there are many books in, in particular talk about them. I'm sure the brothers know about Jami' al-Bayan al-Ilm wa Fatlih li Ibn Abdul Bar. Jami' al-Bayan al-Ilm wa Fatlih li Ibn Abdul Bar. And this is a great work talking about knowledge and the scholars. If you're not familiar with it, become familiar with it, inshaAllah ta'ala. So this is something that we need to know about. The scholars, Rahmatullah, may Allah preserve those who live amongst us, and may Allah have mercy upon those who have passed away. Who are they? Who are the scholars? Everyone claims these days that this person is scholar and that person is scholar. So it's important for the ones upon Dawah Salafiyya, and the ones who are upon the way of Ahl al-Athar and Ahl al-Hadith, the ones who are in fact Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the ones who are in fact upon the Haq, that they know who the scholars are. 
It has been mentioned that the one who has a right to be called an alim, these people are qaleelun جد, jiddan. They are very few. And we won't be exaggerating if we say that they're rare. Because the scholar has certain qualities that apply to him that most of those who connect themselves to knowledge today don't possess. فَلَيْسَ الْعَالَمُ The scholar is not مَنْ كَانَ فَسِيحًا بَلِيغًا Who can speak well and who's articulate. Doesn't make him a scholar. Who a fasih. Who a baliyah. He can talk. That doesn't make him a scholar. The scholar also is not the one necessarily who writes a bunch of books. Or someone who takes a manuscript that has dust up on it in one of the old books, uh, libraries and takes it out, blows off the dust and then does tahqiq of it, corrects it. This doesn't make him a scholar. If we judge a scholar on these type of things, how many books he has, then we would be making the scholars a small uh, a group of people, or we would have been, actually we would be entering everybody, everybody in the arena of scholars. And this is what reminds of most people when they think of Ireland. If you were to ask someone, you step out, you say, is this, who, who's a scholar? Name to me five scholars. Name to me six scholars. And you will be astonished by the statements that you would get. He cont- we continue on by saying, in most people's mind, they are taken in. They are tricked. They are conned. Many of the Amma and the general people to think that if somebody uh, speaks cl- classical Arabic or he speaks well, he's articulate, or he can give a strong khutbah, then it makes him a scholar. Or that if he writes a book, then he makes him a scholar. And that therefore they have a, a position of astonishment with these people. But in reality, the scholar, Al-Alam Haqqan, is the one who has taken in the knowledge. A large amount of knowledge of shari, legislative knowledge. And he knows the legislation, the rulings of kitab and sunnah. He knows to abrogate it, that which has been abrogated and that which abrogated, abrogated those ayat and those ahadith. He knows the mutlaq, that which is general and muqayyid and that which is restricted. He knows that which is summarized and that which is in detail and that which explains it. And he has knows knowledge or have the aqawil of the salaf. He has in his heart the statements of the salaf and their differences. Another fact of the signs of the one who has the right to be called an alim is what Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said. Laysa al-ilm. Listen to this. Knowledge is not an kathrat al-hadith. By relating a lot of narrations. Huh? But in al-ilm, verily knowledge is khashyat Allah. Is having fear of Allah. Is having fear of Allah. And Yahya ibn Aktam said, it's obligatory upon every scholar to know that which is abrogated from Quran and that which abrogated it. Right? That which is mansukha. I should say nasikh le Quran wa mansukhahu. So that he will not make obligatory upon himself, O oh, the servants of Allah, that which Allah did not make obligatory upon them. And Imam Ibn Abdul Bar has, has a chapter in his book called, which is called Jami Bayan al Fatwa, which you mentioned, Bab chapter, who has the right to be called a faqih or, or alim, haqiqatan, in reality. In reality. And who has the right to give fatwa. Then he mentions some narrations. Amongst them is the narration of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Play, pay attention to this narration. It is enough of the fear of Allah, or the fear of Allah is enough of knowledge. In other words, enough to be knowledge by Allah that you fear Him. And it kafa bi khashyatillah ilman. Enough that you fear Allah, that you, you have this, this, that the fear of Allah, that this ilm that you have have led you to fear Allah, this shows that you in fact have, have knowledge. And enough that you are deluded 
in a sense of thinking that you have some position with Allah or feeling safe from the plotting of Allah to be jahl, to be ignorant. It's enough of, all, enough of the knowledge regarding Allah that you fear Him. Enough or proof that you're in delusion and in a state of ignorance that you feel that you have some status with Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, some position with Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, or that He will not punish you for your sins. Al-iqtirar. Al-iqtirar. That's enough ignorance. And Allah Ta'ala said, Verily those who truly fear Allah are the ulama, the scholars. And Ibn Juraid said uh, on authority of Atta, He who knows Allah, he is the scholar. And Ibn Qayyim Rahimullah says, This matter of restricting the knowledge of Allah, or this ayah is restricting true knowledge of Allah to those who possess not ilm. This ayah, this ayah which we have taken in Surah Al-Fatihah verse 28, it is restricting the true knowledge of Allah and fear of Allah to the scholars. They are the ones who truly fear Allah. And they are the ones who truly know Allah, the ulama. And Qatada said, he who doesn't know the differences, I need the differences in opinion among the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the Tabi Tabi'een, he hasn't breathed in, he hasn't inhaled the fragrance of fiqh. He has an inhale, fiqh, the fragrance of fiqh. Because he doesn't know what? The differences among Sahaba in this regard. وَقَالَ سَعِيدْ مَا عُرُوبًا He who does not know the ikhtilaf, the differences in the, in the furu, uh, the minor points of deen, or branches of deen that the Sahaba might have had, he is not to consider alim. He's not to consider a scholar. You're starting against a, a picture now of who can be called a scholar. I mean, from the very first statement, many people that you thought, just because they could speak, just because they uh, made your emotions flow or whatever, you ruled them out because it's not just somebody for seeing. And just because they have a number of books, you ruled that out. And you're getting down to the point that it's not just a matter of talking. It's not just a matter of relaying information. But it's the fear of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And it's knowing and having knowledge of the Qur'an and what was revealed. Knowledge of the sunnah. Knowledge of the statements of the companions. Imam Malik said, said, or was asked of him, Liman yajuz al-fatwa? Who is the British Lord to give fatwa? He said, La yajuz al-fatwa. It's not permissible to make fatwa, to give juristic rulings except the one who knows the differences of the scholars. And someone said, the difference of the people's opinion? He said, no, the difference is amongst the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-nasikh wal mansukh That which was in place, and then another verse or hadith came and abrogated it from the Qur'an or the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who knows that, kada yufti, he can give fatwa. He can give fatwa. The scholar, الذي يؤتي كل حديث, the one who gives for every hadith, حقهو, is right. And Abdullah ibn Mubarak, that great Imam, was asked, when is it permissible for a man to give fatwa? He said, إذا كان عالما بالأثر, if he's now has knowledge of the narrations, basirin bil right. And upon clarity in his opinions, regarding the issue of opinions. So therefore the true alam is the one who is able to connect himself to these matters. And he's never satisfied with ilm. He never has enough of knowledge. Even if he doesn't speak that many words. And even if he doesn't have that many books. Even if he doesn't speak that many words, and even if he doesn't have that many books. Qal ibn Rajab rahimullah, wa kartalayna. Now ibn Rajab rahimullah has this great monument to work called, Fadl al-ilm al-salaf al-khalaf. 
the virtue of the knowledge of the Salaf over the knowledge of those who came after them. And I hope that someone will translate it, inshallah. Perhaps our brother Abu Maryam, who seems to have a zeal for translation these days, would do so. Nevertheless, he has in one of the statements, we have been tested with ignorant people who believe that just because someone can speak well or in detail, men are from those who came later, that he's more knowledgeable than those who preceded. Some of them think that a person is more knowledgeable than anybody that preceded him, even the Sahaba. Because he talks a lot and he speaks a lot. Right? And therefore he has more knowledge than those fuqaha al-mashhoorin, those fuqaha who are well known, who the people follow. What this means, he said, yazm, what this means is that that those before him of the fuqaha, who he who has followers, who he believes he's knowledgeable, more knowledgeable than them, or they believe he's more knowledgeable because he speaks more, that therefore this this means that he in fact was more knowledgeable than those who taught them. Because there's no doubt that they talked more than their teachers. And they talked more than their teachers. And it goes back like that. And he says, so therefore, if he then you would say that Tori and Awza'i and Laith and Mubarak and that level that he from the Tabi'een and the Sahaba that they're more knowledgeable those who came after them are no more knowledgeable than them why? because Aqalla Kalaman they speak less than them and then that those who were before them came and from the Sahaba Ibn Mas'ud and those like that that they were more knowledgeable than them because there were some among Sahaba who spoke less and who were more knowledgeable, like the narrations of Bakar Sadiq, are fewer than the narrations of any other other Sahaba. The narrations of Abdullah ibn Abbas may be more, and more his talk he may be more. What his point is, and I hope it's clear, is that this is not a signal. This is not any type of manner. This is not any type of scale to judge knowledge on. This is an erroneous and a mistaken scale to judge knowledge based on the fact that someone talks more than others. How many narrations do you find from Abu Bakr? But as Sadiq, yet all the Sahaba say, and Abu Bakr was the most knowledgeable amongst us. And Abu Bakr was the most knowledgeable amongst us. So it is not a matter from that. Abdullah Mas'ud seen this illness coming and he talked about it. He said, verily you are in a time in which you have a lot of ulama and you have very few speakers. But there will come a time where you will have only a few ulama and you will have many speakers. So those who their knowledge is a lot and his speech is little, then they are praiseworthy. And those who are opposite are blameworthy. Those who knowledge is a lot and their speech is little, mamduh are praiseworthy. And those who are opposite are blameworthy. Think about this, brothers. And think about the last statement. He who has a lot of knowledge and his speech is little than he who are al-mamduh. He's praiseworthy. And he who is in the opposite of this, he's matmum, blameworthy. This is the scale this is the scale. But this scale is almost non-existent in the ranks of those who call themselves Salafis. Non-existent. I mean, let's not talk about those other than Salafis. But amongst the Salafis, this Mizan, this scale, where is it at? Where is it at? We are in a time where the Juhal, the ignorant can talk about the great scholars like many have talked regarding Sheikh bin Baz and said very nasty things. And Sheikh Al-Albani and said very filthy things regarding him. And Sheikh Muqbil and Sheikh, and Sheikh Rabi, Hafidhullah. And that's all of this because they did not have the scale that we're talking about in the words of Ibn Rajab and the words of Ibn Mas'ud. They did not have the scale. They did, not, they did not know how to judge the issue. For the scholars are not known by their statements and by talking a lot and by writing a lot. They're known by call Allah. Allah said. Call Rasulu. The messenger said. 
kala sahaba, the companions said, this is what they're known. They're not known by kathrat kalam, a lot of talk, wal jidal, and arguing, and debating in the matters of deen. But everything they do is restricted to kitab and sunnah. Everything they do is restricted to following Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given jawam al-kalim. The ability to say a few concise words that carry a long range and extensive meaning. And the scholars are like that. The words of the salaf are few and carry much barakah and much meaning. The words of the khalif and those who came, those who came after them are very much and carry nothing of real knowledge and no real blessing. So since the, the scholars are in fact inheritors of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those inherit, those who inherit from the prophets, the person who inherits from a person is the one most closest to the person. The one most closest to the person is the one who inherits from that person. And the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. So they have this quality. The same quality of speaking concise and speaking summarized. Few statements, but much meaning, much benefit, and much wisdom to it. The Prophet ﷺ said in the Hadith Abi Huraira, which is in Sahihain, they have been given the keys of speech. And in one word, he's, in one narration, he said, I have been preferred over the other prophets in six matters. Amongst them, I have been giving jawam al-kalim. Jawam mean qaleel al few words, kathir al-ma'ani. Much meaning. Many meanings. And much meaning. Full of meaning. Full of benefit. The people benefit from the time the Prophet ﷺ was sent to Allah to reclaim here is the earth and all that is upon it. Ibn Rajab Rahimullah says, <clears throat> Ibn Rajab Rahimullah says that we have this fitna. Listen to this point. Some people have been put to trial by those who came later of the later day scholars, or the later day mutaakhirin, who were connected to knowledge, not necessarily scholars in the true sense of the word. Min kathra kalamuhu, because his words are a lot. Wajidalahu, and his arguing is a lot. And his debating is a lot in the matters of deen. So they think because this person talks a lot, debates a lot, argues a lot, is good in argumentation and debate, can talk a long time, that he's the most knowledgeable. Wahadha jahl mahd. It is total ignorance. Look to the Akabir Sahaba. Look to the elders of the companions. Their scholars like Abu Bakr and Umar and Ali and Mu'ad and Mas'ud and Zayd and Thabit. How were they? They talked a little. They talked a little. فَلَيْسَ بِعَالَمْ بِكَثْرَةِ riwayah. The scholars not by relating a lot of narrations. وَلَا بِكَثْرَةِ الْمَقَالَةِ By speaking a lot. وَلَكِنْ هُوْ نُورْ But it's a light that Allah throws in the heart of an individual that يَفْهَمْ بِهِ الْعَدْ The servant understands how he can make a distinction between that which is batil, false, and that which is true, and how he can express that to others in a very short and concise and summarized manner. This is knowledge. We're talking about ilm. And we should know, Barakallah Fikum, that we have to distinguish with the scholar, the scholar by many things. Amongst them, and this was in the first setting, amongst them is uh, his age. Age in most cases has a place, especially when it comes to knowledge, except rarely. And we're not talking about exceptions, we're talking about the general rule. The scholar normally should be someone who's elderly. 
Someone who's lived a long time. Someone whose beard is gray. Unless he places henna in it, right? Someone who is oh, an old individual, right? This is not, we say, a condition for somebody to reach the level of scholars. But in this time we say we make it like a condition because of the harm that comes from taking knowledge from the youth. Many of the asagas, the youth, they don't connect people to the kibar, to the great scholars. And because of this, there's a lot of corruption and misunderstanding. And this is why the people are not able to distinguish the scholar from other than him. So, the scholar has these type of things that are distinguishing. He is old in age, elderly. He has war, abstinence. He is a'lam, has knowledge. He is of someone who has a sort of sakina and waqar to him. Uh, 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 and a hill a forbearance and a patience and a maturity that's the word a maturity to him listen to what Abdullah Masood who said the people will always be in good as long as they take their knowledge from the uh, from the akabirahim yani from their elders and from those who are trustworthy from the scholars who are elderly and when they start to take it from the youth then they are taking it from the worst and they will be destroyed and they will be destroyed and this has been explained the word sigar here some say sigar means ahlul bidda so they say that it means the people are always being good as long as they take their knowledge from uh, the people of sunnah of the akabir and not from the asagir ahlul bidda but it's no reason to go from the direct meaning to, of the word to other than that. In other words, this can be included. But amongst, of course, the first meaning of it, first and foremost, and the pri- the meaning that has priority before you say Ahl al is those people who are young. Those people who are young. And Abdul Muslim al Dainuri was asked about this matter. What is the statement that the people always be good if they take their knowledge from their elders? That it, he said it means, he explained it. He said it means that they will always be in a good condition as long as they take their knowledge from the older folk. And that their scholars are not these young individuals. Because the sheikh, the older individual, and sheikh Manja was a khamsin, the one who is above the age of 50, right? Who has went beyond 50, that's the sheikh in the Arabic word. What has happened to him? The, the, the frailty, frailties and mistakes of youth have went away. And the harshness of youth has went away. And the rushing and desiring to rush in matters has went away. And the stupidity and foolishness has went away. And he also has a tajriba, experience. Right? He has experience in what he's been doing. So there's nothing that enters to his knowledge of shubha, of doubt. Nor does desire overtake his knowledge like it does with the young man. Nor does he go with, 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 with what he, uh, his youth, his inexperience would make appeal to him. Huh? And he's not often tricked by shaitan like those who are young. And with the, and with the years come a respectability. And with the years come a security. And with the years come forbearance. And with the years come, huh? Waqar. Not rushing. Huh? This is all that comes. With the years come a haiba, a certain amount of respect. Yani, but youth, they enter into all of those issues which are opposite. Rushing, rushing, being harsh, being brutal, not having any wisdom, not weighing the harms and the benefits of their action. This you don't find with the old men of maturity. So he said, these things that are with the youth, the sheikh or the older people, are free from. 
So if you take your dean from the youth, then and enter into what they have entered into, they will destroy themselves and you will be destroyed. And this is related in Sharf Ashab al Hadith. So that his explanation of that narration. Wakajan ibn Mubarak has become about Ibn Mubarak that the statement Asagir means the people are bitter. But like he says in reality, the word Asagir is a left am. It's a general term. So it includes those who the actual word is referred to and it includes the meaning. In other words, it has two meanings. The meaning to, that you get originally when you hear something is Sagir or Asagir or who are Asgar Minhu. Yani he's younger than him. You get that from the left, the wording immediately. And then if you understand from the ma'ana that the Sagir Ahl al then that's included also. So both those meanings are there. So it's upon the student of knowledge to go to the ulama al kibar, those who have a firm foothold. Those who are well grounded in knowledge, especially as long as they exist. But the fact of having these older scholars and we don't go to them, this is total foolishness. We should go to those scholars that have been witnessed that they are upon khayr and that they are on the straight minhaj. And if the kibar, the older ones witness for someone that he has knowledge, and you take from him, then there's no problem in that also. Ibn Masarin says, this ilm, this knowledge is a matter of deen. So look to who you take your deen from. This knowledge is a matter of deen. So look to teach from who you take your deen from. Inna hadha ilm deenan. Fanzur amman ta'khudhuna deenakum. Malik ibn Anas said, listen to the statement of Imam Malik. Laka adraktu bihad al-balad. I have met in this balad, yani Medina, huh? many people who have virtues and who have salah. And he said, Mashaykh, you know, and worship, and who are worshippers and who relay things. But I have not taken one hadith from any of them. He says, why is that, O Abu Abdullah, which was a kunya bin Malik? He says, because they did not know what they were in fact relating. They did not really have, they were not well grounded in knowledge. They were not well grounded in knowledge. Ibn Jama'ah says, it's upon the student of knowledge to make, to look and to make his salat al istikhara as to who he should take his knowledge from. And take his knowledge from the one who has good akhlaq, good morals and manners, and good adab. Huh? Because this will make this person a more, bin a, 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 more ahliyan, someone who is uh, the one you should take from. Huh? And, and this is something that should be known regarding this issue. So we have it that he also usually the scholar is someone who's old in age old and age and taking what we have taken before I hope the picture is starting to get clearer and clearer as to who are the scholars who are the scholars and he, the statement of uh, Ibn Jama'ah is nice said the person who you take from who has these good akhlaq and adab and he, therefore, he's of ahliya, he is of a person of a level that you can take from. And his shafaqa has been shown, his gentleness and his mercy, and his muru'a, and he, his manhood. And you know of his chastity, and he is uh, well known as someone to teach, and well known as someone who has understanding. So it is not for the student of knowledge to just look for the matter of knowledge, without looking at the person's self-restraint or his deen, or the absence of him having beautiful character. No, he should look at that. He should strive to find a sheikh who has the uluma shara'iya, the legislative knowledge, with those good characteristics that we have mentioned, and who has a grasp of most of the literature, and most of the books, and most of the matters that have been written, uh, ittila, meaning that he reads a lot, uh, from those things and the things that have happened in this time 
and that he has uh, been with other scholars and uh, is a companion of the scholars and is known to other scholars. This is very important. He has been with other scholars, is a companion of the scholars, and is known by other scholars. Qala Shafi'i, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah says, the one who just gets his fit from the books, then he will lose the legislation. Just getting fit from books. Go in the book yourself and open, open it up and come with, a, come with me. This is not the way. Not to say that those brothers who read the certain books and, and alhamdulillah with the existence of cassette recorders and the like, we may have Ajrumiya explained by Ibn Thaymain. We may have Qawad uh, Arba, Usul Thalatha, or Aqeel Wasatiya, or Aqeel Tahawiya, or Fatawa Hamawiya, or whatever the case may be explained, or Bulugh Maram. Then he uses that plus the Arabic language and reads the book and he gets the sharh explanation of the sheikh. And if he has any question, then alhamdulillah he can pick up the phone and he can, uh, if he has the Arabic language of course, then he can dial the number and ask the sheikh, did you mean this or whatever? Or if he, if, if the sheikh himself is not alive, one of his students, did you, did he mean this and that and whatever? This is not what he's talking about. He's talking about the guy who picks up the books and tries to go his own. How many times He's left upon his own, upon foolishness, and upon bitter, and upon that which is uh, foolish. How many times that's the case? Quote to, and he, he's, uh, before I get to that, statement of Shafi, he has a, we have a comment on the statement of Shafi, but nevertheless, the one who takes from the, uh, this is a good way of putting it, the one who takes from the books, or rock, huh? And he, he's saying not to take from, from them by themselves, but he should have suhbat al mashaikh He should be a companion of the mashaikh And he should have some understanding. Huh? This shows the importance of taking knowledge from the scholars of our time. And how are we going to do this if we don't know who the scholars of our time are? Taking knowledge from the scholars of our time. How many of us have taken by these scholars of our time in their houses? How many? Most of us taste by preachers, preachers who are Muslims, or du'at, or people can talk well, or so on and so forth. But how many of us have tapes or cassette tapes of the scholars of our time? This is how the Salaf Salaf work. They used to travel distances, long distances to get knowledge from a particular scholar on a particular continent or a particular area. Look at Abu Ayyub al-Ansari traveling to Uqba ibn Amr in Egypt just to take one hadith that he heard from him, which is a hadith of covering your brother faults. He traveled a month's journey to hear that. Sayyid Musayyib said, I used to travel night and day to get one hadith. He's talking about himself. In, I used to travel night and day to get one hadith. And here we have nine volumes of Bukhari sitting on the shelf in Sahih Muslim. And we had to pick them up and blow the dust off of them. We say Sunnah, 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 Sunnah. But the Sunnah is in one valley and we in another. Sunnah, we don't never read Bukhari. And the Sunni, and you never read Muslim. And the Sunni, you don't even pick up Riyadh al Salihin. And the Sunni, you never finish Bukhari. And the Sunni, you never finish Sahih Muslim. What is this but madness? Qala Fawzan, Hafidhahullah, one of the great scholars of our time. He said, many of those who are trying to learn, just depend, just read the books. And claim that that's a good way to get the knowledge. He said, and they don't benefit from the scholars, but think that they don't need them. He said, hadha khata adheen, this is a great mistake. And it leads to a great, great danger. Because every book besides the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger, huh, has mistakes. It has that which is correct and that which is mistake, which is a mistake. It says that which is right and that which is wrong. And sometimes it has that which is good and that which is poison. So the one who is in the beginning stages of his knowledge, he's not able to distinguish. So therefore, it would be more harmful to him than benefit. He's not able to distinguish that which is beneficial from that which is harmful. Which is, which is harmful. Unless he goes to a mu'allam. 
a teacher who has some knowledge, who can show him what is correct in those books. What is correct in those books. He means by this that he can show him what is in those books that is nafi, that is beneficial, and that which is a mistake and harmful. He can explain, explain to him the ibarat, the expressions that are not clear, that are unclear. And, and if the knowledge was, he said, just taken from a book, our scholars, the Salaf, the Salaf would not have taken those great journeys and would not have exposed themselves to so many dangers of traveling that day, those days, in the desert, at night, on a camel, 30 days, 30 days on a camel, highway robbers, scorpions, cold, I mean, snakes, you know, dogs, everything. Why? To get the knowledge directly. So if you could just depend upon books, that's what they would have done. So this shows the importance of taking knowledge from the scholars. So now we have to talk about some signs that distinguish them from those who claim to be scholars. I mean, even though you have some distinct, some things that we distinguish, this will help more, inshallah ta'ala, bi'ithnillah. Min alamat ahl al-ilm al-nafi. From the signs of the people with beneficial knowledge. Who are in fact the people of knowledge, huh? Is that they don't see for themselves any station, any position. And yakrahum, they hate. Kiraha here means hate. Yakrahum bikulubihim ataskiya. They hate that people purify them or praise them. Ataskiya wal madh. Wala. And they do not have arrogance or pride over anyone. Listen to the qualities again. From their sign is that they don't see for themselves any special hal and circumstance. Any maqam and any position. And yakrahoon, and they hate with their heart to be considered righteous or for me to make tiskiyah for them or to make madh of them, praise them. And they don't see themselves as being better or above anyone. Qal al-Hasan rahimahullah, إنما الفقيح They are the one who has fiqh, az-zahid, the abstinent one regarding the dunya. He desires the akhirah, the hereafter. إنما الفقيح, the scholar, is the one who abstains from the dunya. Al-raghib, fil akhirah, desires the hereafter. Al-basir bidinihi, who has clarity in his deen. Al-wadib ala ibarat rabbah. The one who is consistent in worshiping his Lord. And in one narration he says, الَّذِي لَا يَحْسَدْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ He doesn't have hasad for the one who's above him. وَلَا يَسْخَرْ مِنْ مَنْ دُونَهِ And he doesn't make fun of those below him. وَلَا يَخَذْ عَلَى عِلْمِ اللَّهِ أَجْرًا And he doesn't want any reward for the knowledge that he has been given from Allah. Look, رَحِمَكَ اللَّهِ Rahimakum Allah, look may Allah have mercy upon you to the statement, وَيَقْرَحُونَ بِقُلُوبِهِمْ They hate with their hearts that anyone mentions them in a nice way, makes tasqiyya of them, or make madh, praise of them. You can, this is a distinguishing matter, brothers. This is a alama, a sign that is known for the people who have knowledge. One of them, if they hear that he's being praised, and from the people, runs away from them. Whereas those individuals who now claim knowledge love to be praised, love to be have the sadara be up, up front. As Sheikh Nasir used to say, "Hub al-dhuhr," loving to be out front breaks the dhuhr, will break the backs. Loving to appear, loving to be praised. 
So this is a distinguishing character of the people of knowledge. Ibn Rajab says from the signs of the people of knowledge that knowledge leads the person who really has it to yahrab min dunya He runs from the dunya. Yahrab min riyasa. He runs from trying to be a leader. Wa shuhra. Trying to be famous. Wal mat. Trying to be praised. He runs away from all of that. And he strives his utmost to avoid it. This is a sign of ilm al nafiq the beneficial knowledge. And if it happens, listen to this, if it happens without his choice, if it happens and he wasn't trying to let nobody know what he was doing, but they praised him without his choice, they will have great fear, khawfun shadeed, great fear that their ending would be bad. That this was a plotting from Allah Taala, wa israjin from Allah for sins that they could they had committed in the past. That this is a way of Allah Taala pulling them to their punishment, like Imam Ahmad thought. When Imam Ahmad, who had been beaten for saying that the Quran was the words of Allah Taala, Imam Ahmad, who had been who had been tortured, man, one man said, I hit Imam Ahmad with a with at such a whooping and beating that if I had to beat an elephant, an elephant would have fall, fallen out. Broke his arms and everything. Stayed patient, sobering upon this aqidah. An imam in that time today say now that Islam was saved twice. Abu Bakr Sadiq fi ayyam riddah. Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu when the people apostated after the death of the Prophet Islam. Well, Imam Ahmad fi ayyam al mihna and the Imam Ahmad when Ma'amun and others were putting them to trial for not, for not believing their innovative belief. Killing others and torturing them. He came out of the prison. And the, it looked like the whole dunya was there to greet him. The whole dunya was wanting to carry on, carry him on their shoulders. The whole dunya was saying, Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahmad, Sunnah. Someone said, what do you think about that Imam Ahmad? He said, I feel that it may be istidraj. I fear that it may be due to my sins, Allah Taala, Ta'ala, due to me disobeying Allah, that Allah Ta'ala is pulling me to a bad destination or a bad ending. This is the sign of the scholars. Also, he doesn't want money. Money. That's a distinguishing point. Between the money that is given, for instance, to Ayyamat al-Haram, or to Imams of Harams, or brothers who are giving da'wah, whatever, you give them money to free them up to be able to give that da'wah. That's called a ratiba, it's okay. But to make your da'wah just for money, and your mawakif, your stance based upon money, this is not the way of the salaf. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said, or not why, but we can say, this is in turn, Dealing with the hadith of the Prophet Islam of Ka'b bin Ayyad anhu, which says, for every ummah there is a fitna, and the fitna of, um, of my ummah is money. For every ummah there is a fitna. Shaykh Muqbil, rahimahullah, used to mention this hadith often, when many left him, many of his students who were upon his taqamah left him for the various jama'iyat and societies that offered them money and opened the doors for them to all types of lives of luxury, he would say, the Prophet ﷺ said, verily for every ummah there is a fitna, and the fitna of my ummah is the money. Nam, wealth is a fitna. How many people have went astray? Some of the best students of knowledge have went astray and joined the groups of Bid'iyah and the Hizbis based on the fact that they gave them some money. Also, I don't want to, huh? The people, inshallah. Well, we're not going to get to a lot of what I wanted. That about, inshallah. No, I don't. I don't want to go over. I, I, I prefer to stay, stay within the time. I like this, this new thing of being on time. It's incredible. Ni'mati <laughs> bi'da <laughs> It's a good bid'a. In the sense that this is what we were supposed to do before. Right? And now we're reviving it. That's what Umar meant, right? 
Ilm al Nafi' that Ibn Rajab. I think, to be honest, we should go ahead, I should go ahead and just mention this few lines and then we can uh, get some money from you brothers, inshallah. <laughs> Uh, we'll talk about that, inshallah. There are scholars in our time, walillahi alham. There are still inheritors of the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam existing amongst us. Allah took Allah has not left us hamalan without guidance. He has not left us without those who have a chain going all the way back to Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it's upon us to take them Respect them, love them, and benefit them like from, from, from them, like the likes of Sheikh Abdullah Zibin Baz, or Sheikh Ibn Thaymeen, or Sheikh Al Albani, or Sheikh Muhammad Amman Al Jami, or Sheikh Hamar Ansari, or Sheikh Abdul Razak Afifi, or Sheikh Muqbil Al Hadi Al Wadi'i, and others of them who have passed away. All of those are dead, Rahimahullah. Or Sheikh Tawajiri, Rahimahullah. All of those are dead. These are those who everyone is sure about their knowledge. The Muslims trust them, and they take their knowledge from them, and they, and they benefit from them. And then those who are alive amongst, amongst us. Shaykh Allah Ahmed ibn Yahya Najmi. Even though I didn't hear Dawood said something about him being sick. Huh? You mentioned his sickness? Uh, that's what I understood. Take it. Hafizahullah. Wa Shaykh Al-Fawzan. Wa Shaykh Zayd Al-Madkhali. Wa Shaykh Abdul Aziz al Shaykh. وشيخ عبد المحسن الأبار وشيخ غاديان وشيخ سالي الوحيدان وشيخ ربي بن هادي المدخلي وشيخ سالي الصحيمي وشيخ أبي الجابري and many many others who are upon their way these are the أئمة أعلام the well known scholars that we take our deen from and that we believe that those who oppose them or talk bad about them then it's a sign of his deviancy this is a sign of his deviancy and they are from Ahl al-Ilm who, we, who Allah said, فَاسْأَلُوا أَحْلِ الذِّكِرِ Ask the people of dhikr, إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And they used to examine people and people's motive and position regarding those who were the carriers of the sunnah. They weren't hisbis because, or, or into shakhsiyyah because that is like what Ibn Taymiyyah said, مَنْ نَسَبَ shaksan. He who places a man because of what he calls to from himself. And loves and hates based upon that man. That's something different. We, they're not calling to themselves. We love them because they're, of what they carry of the sunnah. If Rabi' did not, Allah did not carry the sunnah, we wouldn't have a love for him. If Rabi' did not carry the sunnah, we did not say that those who talk about him, are from the people of desires and ahwa. Why? Because they're not attacking him personally, they're attacking what he carries. Like the one who talks about Bukhari. He never met Bukhari on a personal level. But he talks about Bukhari. He is talking about Bukhari because what Bukhari carries. Same thing with the Sahaba. He who talks about the Sahaba, is not a personal conflict between him and Abu Dhar not no personal thing, Abu Musa Ash'ari got on my nerves when they lived centuries ago. No, it's because what they carried, what they conveyed, Quran and Sunnah. Sheikh Fawzan says, ulama, the scholars, yaqumuna maqam al-anbiya, take the position of the prophets in the sense of relaying to us our deen. Be ta'aleem al-ilm, by teaching us the knowledge. Wa tabligahu lil-nas, propagating to the people. Wajib al nas is obligatory upon the people to learn from them and to accept their directives and to benefit from them. They used to ask the people and talk about the people regarding the issue of ilm and the issue of whether or not you were with the people who are upon the haq and who are upon the right. They would say, if you're in Kufa and you don't like such and such fulan, they know that his person is a service and a bidah. If he's in Basra and he doesn't like such and such who carries the sunnah there, they know that this person is such and such is, is up on innovation. Like even Qutayb ibn Sa'id said, If you see a person who loves the people hadith, like Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Qaftan, or Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, or Ahmed ibn Hamad was ibn Rahawai, and he mentions some others, know that he is on the sunnah. 
And those who differ with him or them, فَعْلَمْ إِنَّهُ مُبْتَدِعَ Know that he's an innovator. And Imam Sabuni has a long chapter in his book, uh, The Aqeedah or Ittiqar Ashab al-Hadith. Uh, it's a very, very long one and it has many names in it. He even has amongst those that, you know, you should love and anybody finding fault with them or accusing them in their deen that he's upon bidah. He even says, and Hamdawiyya Sabuni, which he's a Sabuni, and he said, and his two sons, the two swords of the Sunnah, Abi Abdullah Sabuni, wa Abi Abdurrahman Sabuni. And others from the Imams of the Sunnah who are, who are sticking to the Sunnah and supporters of it, call us to it. And we, we connect to these scholars that they have mentioned, many of them. And he, like I say, he mentions a long list of these names that I was, I will not do so for the brevity of time. He mentions, he said, we add to them Sheikh al-Islam in Taymiyyah, and his student Ibn Qayyim, and Sheikh al-Islam Muhammad Wahab, al-Tamimi, of course, and in our time, and he, or from the Mashaykh that are alive, he adds Sheikh Rabi ibn Hadi, because he's a shawqah, he's a thorn in the, in the necks of the Ahl al-Ahwa, the people desires and the people innovations and the Hizbis and like this. And Hamadani said, Ahmad is a test, and he Ahmad humble. From him, you can know whether Muslim is a Muslim or a Zandiq. He who hates Ahmad, you should have, you should have some uh, question regarding his Islam. And in our time, of course, those scholars are most like Imam Ahmad in that regard. So these are the, the scholars. Sufyan in 40 said about, Test the people of Mosul with Ibn Ibrahim al-Fahmi al-Musili. And he tests them with them. If they like him and love him and support him because of what he cares from the Sunnah, of course, then they're on istiqamah, they're upright. And if they hate him, then they are astray. So this is very important to understand. We'll end, inshallah, with the statement of Abu uh, Hassan al-Ash'ari, rahimullah. He said, the statement that we say and the belief that we have is that we stick to the Book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that was related from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the scholars of Hadith, the Imams of Hadith. And we are sticking closely to that which Abu Abdullah Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal, may Allah brighten his face and raise his levels in the paradise and give him the best reward. We say, قَائِنُونَ لِمَنْ خَالَفْ قَوْلُهُ We say to those who differ with his statement and go away from it, from this imam, this statement of Imam al-Fadil, وَالْرَعِيس الْكَامِلِ <laughs> الَّذِي أَبَانَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ May clear with him the truth. And, and, دَفَعَ بِهِ الضَّلَالِ And he protected the ummah from going astray, or, uh, and he blocked the, 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 the dalal of, وَأَوْدَحَ الْمَنْحَجْ And explained the minhaj, and clarified it. And, uh, took أَهْلَ الْبِدَى And humiliated them. And he, فَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ الْإِمَامِ أَحْمَدْ so we should look at this and think about this matter and think about this statement and the statement of those who now try to find fault with the scholars of today. Uh, so I have mentioned to you the scholars and I've mentioned to you the importance of age and maturity and not being in a rush and that this is their qualities and that they have gray hair most of the time and that they're known to be companions of other scholars and that they have been praised in this regard. And I've mentioned to you some names of those فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِهِ So you must stick to them, and you must benefit from them, if you really want happiness in your Salafiyyah. هَذَا وَصَلَى اللَّهَ عَلَى نَبِيَنَا مَحَمَّ وَلَا عَلَى صَحْبِ وَسَلَّمَ